So the archetype of the witch is really at the core of all of my teaching and writing, as is the goddess Hecate. And the archetype of the witch has such a beautiful resonance with me. And I know it may have the same resonance with you that when you say the word witch, there is just something that pings true in the deepest parts of who we are. And when we explore the archetype of the witch, Hecate is always there. Hecate is like the heart of the archetype of the witch. So archetypes are really fundamental to my teaching and my writing. Archetypes are best understood as a type of spirit, but they're not a spirit in the sense that, you know, there is a spirit of this or even a plant spirit. An archetype is a primordial foundational spirit. It's a pillar upon which the universe is built. And in my teaching and writing, Hecate is seen as anima mundi, the sacred feminine uh, primal source so that these archetypes and certainly the archetype of the witch flows from her. Archetypes are really, really difficult to kind of like pin down and get at the essence of them. They can be diverse and non-rational. They can have attributes and characteristics and uh, that are very compelling. They can have overt kind of characteristics that we can see easily. And they also can have really deep, dark, mysterious aspects. And if you're completely new to the idea of archetypes, one way to really understand them is if you know a little bit about astrology. So astrology is based on archetypes and that these archetypes, whether they're the planets or the zodiacal signs have attributes and they are forces. You know, they have influences upon us because they are primordial force. The witch as an archetype has the same kind of primordial force, primordial essence, um, and it is like a spirit onto itself that we experience in many different ways. And, you know, we can't talk about the archetype of the witch and not talk about Hecate as the goddess of witchcraft. And what we are seeing these days in the terms of this awakening of the witch in so many of us, and this call back to Hecate is really ju just this revolution. You know, it's a revolution that we are being freed from the constraints of the civil civilized, the civilized world, in quotation marks. And we are going beyond what we have been told to reclaim something that is primordial. And for many of us, the archetype of the witch resonates deep within our soul. And I want to just kind of clarify the difference between an archetype and like a construct. So we can talk about the construct of the witch, which would be more of a mundane, uh, you know, kind of a logical way to understand the witch. So the witch as a construct, you know, is associated with like Halloween and spells and sometimes a, a crone or an evil seductress. So there are constructs that are associated with the fundamental archetype, but the archetype itself is a spirit. The archetype of the witch comes to us in our dreams, our imaginations. Uh, you know, when we see a picture of a witch and we're like, oh, that just vibrates and resonates within me. That is the power of the archetype of the witch. So it is not merely like a definition. An archetype is a spirit. And if you are a witch and you're called to, you know, the deeper world and you want to begin working with spirits, an ideal way to, to start is to start working with the archetype of the witch. Or I should say like allowing the archetype of the witch to work on you because the archetype of the witch is, you know, kind of, uh, 
endless and is as old as the universe because the archetype of the witch is about the healing power of the natural world and the deeper world. And the witch archetype is fundamentally that of the healer. Now, in our modern terms, we may see this role as a healer in really different ways. You know, we can see it in so many diverse ways. So we, you could be the witch who does her healing work through crystals. You could be the witch who does healing work on herself through her intention settings. You could be the witch who connects with the archetype of the witch by your appearance. And we see the archetype of the witch in all of the diverse glory and uniqueness portrayed so often in pop culture these days. You know, we see the witch portrayed in music and movies and on television, um, you know, and in books and just the archetype of the witch is being explored everywhere we kind of turn these days. And fundamentally that is like a rebellion against civilization because at the heart of the archetype of the witch, in addition to the healing aspects, is also the rebellion. And if I had to say what were the two like core characteristics that we can explore within the archetype of the witch, is this duality of healing and rebelliousness. You know, the witch is the resistor. And it's also about the resistance of civilization. So a third uh, attribute of the archetype of the witch that you can experience, and you may already know this one, is this deep call to return to the wild, to resist civilization. And this of course can result in feelings of restlessness and you know, so you'll have uh, really vivid dreams your imagination, you'll be full of symbols and you'll find all these synchronicities. And it's also when you go out in nature and get away from technology and civilization and the built environment and so on, that you will discover that you feel more alive. And not only do you feel alive in terms of just connecting to the green world and you know it's easier to breathe, but there will be something in your soul that stirs, that says that there is a whole world that is on scene in this green world, that the plants have spirits and the animals have spirits and so on. And as you go into that deeper world, you start to feel that there is even a deeper world, the river under the river, so to speak. And this is the awakening of the unconscious. And the, the archetype of the witch as a fourth kind of trait is also this awakening of the unconscious. You know, it's the, the soul stirring and calling you into the mysteries within yourself so that you can explore the mysteries of the unseen world. So those are four characteristics of the archetype of the witch that set it apart from other archetypes. So, you know, it's the call of the green world coupled with the knowledge that there are spirits within the deeper world, in the green world that can't be seen, but are as real as what our eyes can see. We see them with our third eye and, you know, our deeper self. Uh, it's also the rebelliousness that the witch is the non-conformist and it's also that the knowledge that there is a river under the river so that not only does the natural world have spirits, but that there is a host of spirits, other archetypes, gods and goddesses and so on that also abide in the unseen world. And finally, it's that the archetype of the witch is the awakening of the unconscious so that we can travel and journey into that unseen deeper self. And a fifth characteristic of the archetype of the witch is that not only is witchcraft healing, but witchcraft is also medicine for the soul. So I'm not talking about healing that is just, you know, like what we kind of think of in allopathic medicine, which is like a cure, right? It's like we have something wrong with us. 
we're going to get a cure. The whole thing is going to leave. Healing is about body, mind, and soul. The disease may still remain, yet we are healed because we have accepted it. We are experiencing the disease as part of our wholeness. We're not rejecting it. So that's what I'm talking about witchcraft as medicine. And I want to read just a little quote from this great book, Witchcraft Medicine, Healing Arts, Shamanic Practices, and Forbidden Plants. Witchcraft medicine is wild medicine. It is uncontrollable. It suppresses the ruling order. It is anarchy. It belongs to the wilderness. It scares people. Witchcraft medicine is religion, a shamanic healing religion revolving around the sacred, in other words, effective plants. And I love that quote so much because it just totally speaks to both the power of plant medicine and also that witchcraft is, in the modern sense of the, the word, shamanic, that the healing comes from going inward. And through going inward, we you know, unlock the gates to the unseen world. And it also talks about the wildness of witchcraft. And then, of course, mentions witchcraft as a religion. And I, I believe that if witchcraft has a religion, it's the religion of the soul. It is the religion that is healing, that is about getting into the river, under the river. You know, it's climbing into Hecate's cave after traveling through her garden and going through the cave through the darkness to find healing and wholeness. That is very much the archetype of the witch is about this journey that we're on for wholeness. And of course, the, you know, the history of witchcraft is riddled with persecution and violence and murder and torture. And it is a very, very difficult history for us to kind of consume um, from where we sit. Many of us sit in relative safety and so on. So it can be difficult for us to kind of wrap our heads around uh, what has happened in the past to those who either identified as a witch or who those who are labeled a witch. And of course, when we're talking about history, a lot of times the label witch was slapped on to a woman particularly um, whenever she was a rebellion and if she engaged in healing arts and if she dared to kind of buck the system. Because it's important to note that uh, witches, whether they were sibyls or priestesses or mediums or healers with plant medicine, when they were of use to the power structure, they were used by the power structure. And when they were not of use, they were cast aside, often imprisoned. And the word witch was used to label uh, someone, usually a woman, um, as evil and as cavorting with the devil and, you know, so on. And there's this really heavy history to the word witch. And the archetype of the witch carries that heaviness with her. And I'm using the term her, not in the sense of excluding other genders, but of in differentiating between the witch as being primarily anima, which is the sacred feminine primal force that goes through all things in the universe, compared to um, animus, which is the masculine force. Because fundamentally, witchcraft is of anima. And Hecate, you know, according to the ancients, was anima mundi, the very soul of the world. So we see this correlation from antiquity where Hecate is goddess of witches and Hecate is also anima mundi, soul of the world. So we see this, this kind of portrait emerging that witchcraft and the archetype of the witch flows from anima mundi. It flows from the sacred feminine source. And, and uh, it's good to talk about why this might be. So the sacred feminine force, the anima, is associated with the interior life. It is associated with the self in relation to others. 
It is associated with power with the other, not power over the other. And anima is also associated with this deep healing. You know, it is not cure, it is healing. It is medicine of the soul. It is the inward journey. And animus, the kind of archetypal masculine force, is very different than that. And we both, ha we have both anima and animus within us. So it's not either or, um, you know, and neither one is good or bad. It is just, these are the two kind of primal forces, anima and animus. And of course, in this day and age, you know, we're exploring femininity and masculinity. So I'm using a psychological lens just to kind of talk about the differences between anima mundi and, and animus. And it's really a way of understanding ourselves through these kind of broader archetypes, just as we can understand ourselves through exploring the archetype of the witch. However, we explore, you know, the archetypes. Archetypes are vast and they are diverse and they are beguiling. And this is where we come into trouble with all of the control that's been imposed on the witch over the histories, because, you know, she is about the interior life, about intuition and emotions and feeling. And this is connected to wildness and the deeper world. And it is the opposite of the civilized world. So when we talk about, uh, you know, the magician as the male figure who works with magic the magician as an archetype is about power over. It is about using magic through the outward world. It is about personality and structure and order and civilization vis-a-vis -vis the witch that is archetypally about the feminine, the inter interior life, power with, and so on. So you can see there is a difference between the magician and the witch archetypally and exploring this through a psychological lens. Of course, how you may experience this as an individual can vary greatly. And, you know, in my teaching and work, I use a psychological lens to explore the archetype of witch and the goddess Hecate. And, you know, my own journey is really embedded in this art, uh, this exploration of mine. You know, this key, what keeping her keys is is this great journey that I'm on and uh, that resonates with so many. And for me, as a psychologist, uh, you know, I practiced in healthcare and academia as you know, and as, as a psychologist doing research in attachment and close relationships and well-being, you know, working with women and families to help develop and implement and evaluate self-directed programs. And all of this was about a healing journey. It was about moving them in a way that was empowering to wholeness. And that's really always been my kind of prime objective in life is to be a, a healer teacher in this role. Now, of course, when I was a psychologist, you know, talking about being a witch was something that was definitely not appropriate. Um, and so throughout my whole career, throughout my training and then my career, uh, you know, I, I kept my witchcraft away from the surface of my work in the university and in the hospital. Uh, in order to kind of, you know, further my career, because the archetype of the witch, if witch resonates with you, and when you say it to yourself, if you're like me, when you look in the mirror and you say witch, it's something that reverberates and feels so true, um, that it comes with a cost a lot of the time. And I, I, it's really important to discuss the cost, because claiming the archetype of the witch as who you are, like claiming that you're connected to this archetype, 
You are part, you are an embodiment of this archetype, which is what witches are. Um, that usually comes with a cost. And that's one of the qualities of the archetype is that there is a cost for being connected to being an embodiment of the witch archetype. And this is, of course, is what we see through the often tragic history of persecution and so on. And we can also experience it just like I did in my career where I couldn't openly talk about being a witch or you know, be on social media or anything where I talked about being a witch or witchcraft because it was you know, seen as something that was really derogatory, dangerous and wild and you know, crazy. Um, eventually, um, as the archetype of the witch does, she haunts our dreams and she pokes at us and she can't, says, keep going, keep persisting. And Hecate is often, of course, the vision that we see because she brings the archetype of the witch you know, that comes with her. She trails it with her. There is no Hecate without witchcraft. Those two are so entwined that we can see how the archetype of the witch is really perhaps like symbolically her first creation, you know, that she birthed the world and then she birthed witches and then the rest of it happened, that we are that connected to anima and her spirit. So it often comes with this kind of price. Now, eventually, as the story goes, you know, the call of the archetype of the witch and Hecate within me grew so strong that I decided to step away from that career and kind of put everything at risk in order to pursue what I felt was true to me. And this is also another characteristic of the archetype of the witch is that there is a call to a journey that involves risk, but there is a knowing that the reward will be great healing, really wholeness, sovereignty and empowerment and so on. So that is another aspect of the archetype of the witch. And another part of this archetype is that the witch always abides on the edges. The witch is not set right in the middle of society. You know, the witch sometimes be a high priestess or a queen, um, but the witch is not about being in the civilized world. The witch is about being the edge dweller. And that's a really important aspect for us to connect with and explore within our own lives how we are edge dwellers or hedge dwellers or hedge riders. You know, the, we can get into all kind of the metaphorical ways of understanding that the witch, the witch is fundamentally always going to be not of the mainstream. We are a, an important force on the planet. We help to keep the balance of the planet. And when we are too subdued, we are too forced into the shadows, even you know more than is our nature of staying in the shadows. When we're really chained, you can see how the balance of the world goes askew. And the denial of the archetype of the witch as an inherent and beautiful part of the world is really a big part of why we're in such a global state of chaos these days. Because to, to deny the archetype of the witch and the goddess Hecate is to deny the natural world, is to say that civilization is the only way, there is no deeper world. Our dreams and imaginations, our visions, the synchronicities we experience, you know, we find a key and so on, that none of these things are valuable, that they are just kind of foolish nonsense. So that's really connected to the archetype of the witch too. And then of course, there is the, you know, the gifts of prophecy and psychic skills that have been really kind of marginalized as well that are also part of the archetype of the witch. So as we get deeper into exploring the archetype of the witch, you can see that it expands, but there is kind of at the heart, this medicine that is healing and there is always a rebellion. There is always this otherness. And witchcraft today is often kind of like cleaned up quite a bit, prettied up, 
Um, and there's a denial of the dark history of the witch. And when we deny kind of the, the shadow aspects of the witch, we really deny the truth of the witch archetype. And I'm just going to read this quote from the Book of Symbols. And it really speaks to how much healing is found through exploring the darker aspects of the witch. Yet even at her most frightful, even as the cackling, tornadic, wicked witch of the West in the film classic, The Wizard of Oz, or, or as the terrifying Baba Yaga who pulverizes the stuff of the world with her motor and pestle, even as a ubiquitous wicked stepmother or venomous crone of so many fairy tales, the witch is always at the vital center of things. She brings us to our true nature. She breaks stasis or purposefully creates it. She sets things in motion, stirs the pot, is instigator and matrix of fateful odysseys and transformations. And she manifests in our stupefying tendencies, the regressions and fascinations that arrest possibilities of growth. She is also the weird earth of our restoration. She makes things so intolerable that we are forced to break the lock. She scares the life into us. I love that quote. And that really, you can see that that quote kind of circumamb circumambulates around the archetype of the witch in a really beautiful way that explains the darkness without saying that the darkness is evil because throughout history, the darkness, the wildness, the use of plant spirits, the deeper world, the going into the unconscious has been vilified as evil because those are all things that are outside of the control of the patriarchy, the power structure. So the witch is always about not being part of the power structure. And yet she persists. And yet so many of us are identifying with the archetype of the witch today, and also the goddess Hecate, that this is really a reflection of how we are rebelling against the denaturing that we've been ex experiencing for hundreds of years now. You know, there, it, this is the time, this is the call, the world has come to this crossroads. And at this crossroads, Hecate has reverberated and unleashed the power of the archetype of the witch. I'm often asked about like, how do I get started in witchcraft? How do I get started with Hecate? And my advice is to sit with the archetype of the witch. You can look at artwork, you can explore the archetype of the witch in movies, you can draw or, you know, creativity is another part of the archetype of the witch. So you can draw or create things um, and just explore what the archetype of the witch is to you and find your space that you naturally abide within this really vast and beautiful and empowering spirit that is the archetype of the witch. There's very little that we can do kind of wrong if we go into exploring our own witchiness with openness and curiosity um, and sincerity, that we're going about exploring the witch within us through understanding the history, following our intuition, and so on. And when it comes to getting started with Hecate, I say the same thing. You know, get an image of Hecate that you really love, sit with a candle. The dark moon is a great time to do this on. And you can just sit there. You can have an image of the witch. Circe and Medea are excellent witch ancestors that you can work with. Um, and maybe an image of Hecate, get a candle on the dark moon, get in a safe space um, and just get comfortable and open up your imagination because that's where the archetype of the witch 
abides, is in that space in our mind. And she comes to us in our imaginations, in what we see. And we've been programmed so long to devalue imagination and dreaming that it can be a real challenge just to allow the imagination to be the sacred space that it is. So I always say, you know, start there. I have lots of great rituals in my books and certainly in the courses I teach. And for me, there is always a tension between wanting to have the reader or the student have space to explore their, their location where they're at within the archetype of the witch and in connection to the goddess Hecate where they're at in that moment and encouraging them to go deeper, deeper still. So performative rituals are fantastic. Um, as long as you know, you're allowing that space for those visions to come out, as long as the ritual is opening the door to the unconscious, it's a ritual that awakens the soul. And that's where you find Hecate, that's where she abides. And that's where the archetype of the witch abides. And if you're watching this video, you know, that archetype is alive and breathing in you, and you are part of that archetype. So express it and experience it in a way that feels true to you. It is helpful to, you know, work on protection, um, you know, to perhaps carry a protective amulet or, you know, have salt or something just in case the energies get to be a bit too much in your explorations. Um, and you can always read, you know, Keeping Her Keys, an introduction to Hecate's modern witchcraft, which guides you through the whole process of connecting to the archetype of the witch and the goddess Hecate. In my new book, there's a deep exploration of plant spirit witchcraft of Hecate's garden. So archetypally, Hecate is the triple form goddess. And as the triple form goddess, she represents the three realms that are symbolized by the cave, the garden, and the temple. So in Hecate's garden, we go deep into her garden to learn the magic medicine and mystery of uh, Hecate's garden of plant spirit witchcraft with Circe and Medea. So it's really an exploration of the archetype of the witch. And I'm going to read um, this little poem from that book to close off this episode. Remember whose you are, Hecate's chosen, never broken, rising stronger, keepers of keys, seekers of mystery, practitioners of the craft, firewalkers, torchbearers, flamethrowers, shadow walkers, Victorious, dragon tamers, banishers of the profane, binders of evil, blessers of the true, speak unto the spirits of my garden, allowing them to fulfill their purpose as your true medicine. The mother has spoken. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of the Keeping Your Keys podcast. You can learn more about my work at keepingherkeys.com.